Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope everyone is doing well. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Uh, this is episode 3 of Yellow Rock Zoo. I am loving this build. It's coming along really great. Uh, starting today on an American Prairie exhibit. It's actually kind of a barnyard too. Um, I went with this uh, this nice old barn that I found on the workshop. I've used it before. It's based off the Molten Barn uh, in Grand Teton, so it's kind of famous, but it fits this area really, really nicely. And it's just the perfect shelter for some bison and some pronghorn. And the, yeah, the terrain stamp, not terrain stamp, but the uh, the terrace tool is still doing that weird thing where it uh where it digs too deep into the ground. I I don't know if that's something new with this update, something weird about this map, or if it's just because I have free build and mods do weird things sometimes. So I wanted to have this be a semi-functional like corral, so I went ahead and uh, added these little additions, uh, smaller paddocks that the animals can go into and out of. And getting those barriers laid in. I want to get the critters in here as soon as possible. Now, whenever you're doing something like this, you want to make sure that the gaps you're leaving are big enough for the animals to go through. And given that I'm going to have bison in here, they're pretty big. They have a really big hitbox. They can be hard to build for. Uh, amazingly enough, they actually fit in with the entire barn. And I forgot to put a gate. So I'll go ahead and get the gate on there real quick. So how is everyone enjoying the Grasslands Animal Pack so far? Uh, I am just thrilled with it. It is just one of the best packs I've uh, I've ever seen. It's it, the animals are fantastic. The new grass pieces are fantastic. And then I realize I have the problem here where uh, they they couldn't go out. The barn door for some reason but moving that one little piece was just enough to make it so that they could go out and we get them out and they're running around we got one piebald pronghorn in here which is cool and i am using a mod that increases the spawn rate of albinos uh, and melanistic and all that uh, just because it's frustrating in Sandbox not to be able to get them. So, hey, I'm going to fix that. And it's a really easy mod to install. It doesn't, uh, and it doesn't affect much. And what's nice is if you have to uninstall it for some reason, uh, the animals that you buy, the albinos, don't disappear or anything. So getting a shade shelter... Go in here, uh, doing the same, basically the same style that we had in the other part of the zoo. Want to keep everything kind of cohesive. Look like it's all meant to be in one place. It's adjusting that so that it fits. And then we have a nice view, raised elevated view of the bison and pronghorn. I thought about using some rock wall pieces from the workshop. These are made by Haribo. Seriously, check them out if you haven't had a chance to. They're awesome. Uh, if you just search rock wall and Haribo, they'll come up. Uh, I ended up instead going with the gridded pieces with the rustic uh, wall set just to just because I've used it in so many other places in the zoo. I want to kind of keep it... It kind of helps integrate this with the rest of the the buildings out there. 
So hoofstock exhibits are always a bit of a challenge because it's so easy to make them a dirt rectangle. And that is essentially what this one is. It's a big dirt rectangle, but it's a dirt rectangle. And yeah, trying to get it to look halfway halfway natural, at least a little bit. So layering rocks again, I uh, made sure there's some elevation changes in the habitat. And they're already using it, their little vantage point there. And realistically, a hoofstock enclosure like this is probably going to be barren. Uh, they're going to eat or trample everything that's there. Probably knock over that small tree, unless they're fenced away from it. But this is Planet Zoo. This is a fantasy. So I want to have a lush hoofstock enclosure. I'm going to have a lush hoofstock enclosure. I've always wanted to build one, so I'm going to do that now. So again, using that blackthorn bush as grass, and then the blue stem, uh, the big blue stem is, oh, it is my new favorite piece. I'm loving it so much. So lots and lots in the corners, lots and lots around the edges. Keeping some sparse areas, but still want it to be nicely planted up. Maybe this is a new enclosure and they haven't had a chance to destroy everything quite yet. So I'm using the greener uh, buffalo grass right around the pond. You'd expect to see green grass growing close up to the water. Uh, it's going to stay moist. It's going to allow for greener growth. Adding in more of the big blue stem. And then some cattail reeds, just because I love cattail reeds. They're all running around there. I like how they check out the new stuff now. It's really cute. I'll throw a little enrichment in there for them. And we give them a Scott's Pine scratching tree. It's kind of sticks out, but not as much as the uh, the rubbing pole. That That weird cylindrical thing. So, I don't know, it's kind of a trade-off, but I think this one looks better that they have that. And then, again, trying to concentrate on making sure that the outside of the habitat gets as much attention as the inside. Lots and lots of grass in this. I'm trying to use the new grass pieces. Uh, the red oat grass is really nice. And some of the old tried and true uh, triode grasses, and then remembering to add in the wattle bush around the edges as well. Since we use that up front, we want to continue using it throughout the zoo, just as decorative foliage along the outsides. It makes a good hedge. Adding that dry buffalo grass all around, and it's starting to come together here. I'm, I'm starting to really like it. Um, I've gone ahead and added in a few uh, workshop props, uh, trailer and tractor and a couple other vehicles that fit really well. And I wanted to kind of fence this area off because it's an area you'd want to keep the public out of. So at first I was going to go with this chain link, but I decided I hated that. So I ended up just using um, the same fence piece, uh, the solid fence piece that we've been using as a shelter cover. And it's kind of a privacy wall to, uh, yeah, to keep, uh, keep the guests out of certain areas. And to kind of block their view of the ugly farm equipment. And it just helps add that little bit of realism there. 
But I like that. That turned out pretty nice. And then continuing on with this guest fencing, uh, the path fencing, you can see that I have a gap in the path here. Um, instead of trying to fight that and like using free build to get rid of it or something, I'm just going to let it be there and actually use it as, uh, as a planter. So we'll stick an olive tree in there. I've come to embrace the gaps in the path. They are opportunities rather than uh, problems, at least in my book. So we go ahead and get all of this fencing in around the edge. Uh, this is really tying everything together in the whole zoo. It's it's starting to look like one facility. Like everything is meant to be here. Uh, I'm really liking this. Yeah, really enjoying how this is coming along here. Um, we're about to head into the cinematics here. I decided to do placing more of these fences off camera. So I did go ahead and finish the fence. Um, but I mean, it's, you guys have watched me place fences for three videos now. I think we've seen enough of that. Not the most exciting content in the world, I know. But it is a good example of how you can use, uh, use blueprints to your advantage. So here we are in the cinematics. Here at the end, again, absolutely love how this build came together. It's fairly simple. It fits the theme of the uh, the conservation center, and it just looks nice. Um, yeah, I'm really happy with how this one came out. Um, obviously, didn't build the barn. Grab that off the workshop. That is a fantastic piece. Uh, if you just search barn, it'll come up. And it is an absolutely wonderful piece. I've used it before. I used it in uh, Wild Mountain Lodge, too. Which I need to go back into that soon and play with that some more. But I do hope you have enjoyed this video. If you have, please leave it a like. Comment down below. Let me know what you think. Uh, subscribe if you'd like to see more. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.